what we want to do in this video is talk about dot bind this. Now, if you are writing your React components in the class component name extends component, then chances are you have run into the fact that when you went from that, uh, the react.create class syntax to this, uh, you, if you wanted to be using this inside of your methods here, you'd be having sort of an issue where you wouldn't have access to this without using dot bind this on your action calls, whether you're on click on submit, that sort of thing. For instance, in this application, what this is, is this is a Meteor uh, and React application. The fact that it's Meteor shouldn't really matter much here. But simply what we're doing is we have a form of two items that we're going to vote on. And uh, when we submit, this is going to hit function up top here, uh, add items, which is essentially going to grab the values using this dot refs. And then it's going to hit the server, right? So what's the problem with dot bind this. I mean, this works, right? But how annoying is it to have this extra line in here every single time? Anytime you have any sort of action, you need dot bind this. I find that to be extremely annoying. And, you know, other people might say it's not annoying to them or it's not a, a, a concern. Well, if it's not a concern to you in, in the terms of having to type that dot bind this every single time, which just seems absurd to me, uh, then you should at least be concerned about the potential performance, uh, potential performance issues. It's a little bit of premature optimization. If you're not building a huge site, this, this isn't necessarily a huge concern, but there are some very real performance benefits from not using dot bind this. In fact, every single time you're rendering, you're creating essentially a new version of this function, which like I said, is could be premature optimization, but it's a performance concern nonetheless, and it's one that you should potentially be concerned about, especially if you can essentially fix it for free. So let's fix it for free here. And what we're going to be doing is adding a decorator. Now, you might be wondering what a decorator is if you haven't used one before. A decorator is essentially a function that's wrapping around your class. And uh, the reason why it's cool is that, well, it's not necessarily in ES6 yet. It's in the ES7 proposal, I believe. It's in the spec. It's, it's essentially spec'd out, but it's not official yet. But there's plenty of people already using decorators all over the place. And this little decorator can save you a bunch of time. And uh, once you use this decorator, you're going to see just how, how nice and convenient it is. So what we want to do is the first thing I should point out is even though this is a Meteor site, all you need is essentially a site that's using Babel. If you are using any sort of build tool, whether it's Gulp or, or, um, or Webpack or any of those, as long as you're using Babel and you're able to receive a Babel RC file, which is essentially the Babel configuration file, then you should be good to go on this. Now, this video is going to be talking about those aspects of that because there's just there's a lot of build tools. I don't want to necessarily cover them all, but what I will cover is essentially how you can get this up and going. First things first, we need two things. We need the Babel plugin transform decorators legacy. That is big, long package name. So I would recommend either Googling that or whatever Babel plugin transform decorators legacy and just so coming up and copying this because this is a typo nightmare here. Uh, somebody who does typos quite frequently. It's a very, very real opportunity for you to mess that up. So I'm using yarn in this project. You can use NPM to install this. You can just add yarn, add Babel plugin transform decorators legacy. That's added to our project. So what this does is it's basically a plugin for Babel that allows us to use decorators in our project. Now you'll want to make sure you read this documentation here. For instance, if you're using other plugins, order of plugins matter. Um, it gives it a little explanation about it. Not too much. It's a short read. Might as well know what you're doing or what you're getting into. So like I said, get this installed via NPM or Yarn or whatever. And the next thing we want to grab is core decorator. So you can head to NPM and, and look for core decorators. Now core decorators includes a whole bunch of uh, stage zero decorators, aka the 2016 ES7 decorators. Uh, you, you know, basically you want to read again, read this stuff. This is in another short read. You don't have to read all of the usage of all this stuff, but the one in particular we're going to be using is four classes dot or at auto bind. So if you click on this one, it'll send you down here. I don't know why it didn't for me, but it should. Yeah. 
And the, what we're going to be using here is really just this four classes auto bind right here. So no biggie there. We want to make sure we grab core decorators and it's pretty easy. We can see yarn add core decorators. And you might be wondering, why these are auto-completing for me. Well, I had actually just recorded this video and there was no audio, so I'm having to do all this stuff over again. But uh, really, this core decorators, but for you, it shouldn't make much of a difference. We just need to add Babel plugin transform decorators legacy and add yarn or add core decorators, and we should be good to go, essentially. What I also want to do is I want to uh, head to my website and I want to change in Babel RC, if you don't have a Babel RC, make sure that your build tool is in fact using a .babel RC. And if it's not, figure out essentially how it can be. Uh, it should be a quick Google webcat, you know, webpack .babel RC, whatever. If you're using Meteor, the beauty of it all is we don't have to do anything. We just have to create a new file .babel RC in the root of our project. You don't have to do anything, right? Just create this .babel RC. If you have the icon package in Atom or your text editor, you should see the little Babel logo. Uh, that's a good way to make sure you spell everything correctly. Now, if we come into this file, it's essentially just an open object with uh, plugins, and then we have an array. I'm not using any of the plugins for this project, so the only plugin in here is Transform Decorators Legacy. Now, this text is really sort of the second half of the package name. It's like Babel Plugins Transform Decorators Legacy. So you only need to write transform decorators legacy. Keep that in mind. And this is my plugin. So really your, your dot babel RC file, if this is the only plugin you're using, should look like this. Now let's go ahead and what I want to do is I want to stop my build tool and rerun it. I'm just doing that so that it 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 definitely sees the new Babel RC file. This thing kind of thing can burn you. You're, you're wondering why it's not recognizing your plugins. Always just start and stop your package manager. It takes a couple seconds. You can see mine's up and running. Okay, so here's the site we're working on, which is essentially a real-time voting application. And before we could vote pretty easily. We just had, like I said, in our, our form here, we're submitting with this dot add items, bind this. And without using this decorator, if I were to remove dot bind this on our add items, we're going to get, let's come here and say run versus swim. Let's add these items. We're going to get a big red error. It says we cannot read property of undefined. That undefined that it's referring to is where I'm using this. In this case, this dot refs, but it could also be this dot set state or uh, this dot anything that you're using in your component. So we removed the dot bind. We added our auto decorator package. How do we actually use this decorator? It's simple. It's very, very simple. All we need to do is come up top here. I'm going to import this. I'm going to import auto bind from uh, core decorators, core hyphen decorators. Keep in mind, this is just sort of a sub module of core decorators. There's a whole bunch of other decorators you can use. I recommend checking them out. Auto bind is certainly my most used. Now we can come up top here above our class. If this is your first time ever using a decorator, you're going to see why people like them. You know, some people don't like them, but uh, I like them a lot because personally they make things a little bit easier sometimes, like this. All we have to do is type at auto bind. No semicolon because it actually continues on into this class. And essentially, this auto bind is going to wrap around our component and it's going to eliminate the need to ever write dot bind this ever again. So anytime you need to write uh, something that has a bind, you just throw this auto bind on top of your component after importing it, having your Babel set up correctly, and check it out. I didn't have to change anything. Keep in mind our code right here for the on submit still says this dot add items. So let's come down to our application and we're gonna do run verse swim once again. And it added it uh, because I didn't vote for dogs or cats. Let's vote for this one. You can now see run versus swim is here. Let's actually vote for run swim. Okay, I click swim even though I'm, I'm not a great swimmer. Here we can have, let's say, MIDI versus audio. Hit enter. 
you can see them show up immediately. So this is a real-time voting app that we made for level up tutorials. Uh, it's now using the core a decorator auto bind and it's doing so to make binding really easy. I use auto bind pretty much all over the place. There's a little performance benefit. It uh, makes it so you don't have to write extraneous code, which I hate. And it, it's easy to add. So honestly, if you have the ability to use it, why not? So that is the auto bind decorator. It's something I'd highly recommend using if you are using the uh, component syntax, the ES26, I don't even know anymore, ES6 syntax. I liked it better when it was ES6. But uh, using that syntax, the class, ex app, extends, component, whatever syntax, auto bind is a really nice thing to have. If you want to learn how to build apps like this, right, this is a real time uh, voting application using React and Meteor head over to store.leveluptutorials.com and you can see it's right here on the billboard, the level two Meteor 1.4 in React. This is the latest series. This is sort of an intermediate series. I actually do cover the auto bind decorator in this series along with some other really cool stuff. If you're new to Meteor entirely, it might be worth it to pick up the Meteor 1.4 React for Everyone too, which is the beginner series. You can pick these both up together for under 50 bucks, or you could become a subscriber, a level up pro subscriber and get access to streaming or downloading these right away at leveluptutorials.com or store.leveluptutorials.com tutorials.com it's clicking this level up pro right here you want to build this this type of content this sort of real-time application voting app check out these two series we'll be building this exact app right here and you'll learn a lot about meteor and a lot about react even if you know very little about either so thanks so much for watching as always this is scott and i'll see you in the next one